on. Awesome. All right, guys. So welcome to week two. Yay. So after the success of our first week webinar, team meeting global, Hong Kong, and Singapore last week, now we continue in this tradition week by week, every Thursday, 10 p.m. Thank you all for tuning in, no matter how busy you are. So this week, we're talking about wellness evaluation. I felt like this topic should have been covered before the breakfast one, but, you know, um, it's never too late. Um, but actually, I intend this um, webinar, this meeting, to be more interactive, like a conversation between all of us. So it's not just like me conducting it, but also at the same time, I'm going to ask your, your, you guys for like feedbacks and also like your contribution into the, um, the topic tonight as well. So um, you guys going to be okay with that? Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Good, good, good. Because I know a few of you guys are quite experienced in the um, fitness and health industry for quite a few years as well. So, you know, I thought it would be good for us to share our different experiences together. So, um, okay, cool. So, all right. How do I press the button? It doesn't go. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's a PDF file. That's why. All right. So, firstly, can I ask you guys a question? Why do I have to do wellness evaluation? Mm, find out more about what our clients um, lack in their daily lifestyle, in their nutrition, in their activity level, so that we can help them, you know, better recommendations to achieve their goals in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they help them well as well. Cool. Anyone else has any ideas why we have to do well in the Sorry, what's that? Did someone say something? No, it, it was you, actually. It was me? Oh, it sounded like there was Yeah, something. it was one of your videos. Oh, okay. That's weird. Okay. Cool. No problems. Okay. So, in our particular case, you know, as wellness coaches here at Fit Club, why we do wellness evaluation? The biggest reason is because, oh, I should actually get into the PowerPoint zone. We're trying to build a long term and lifelong customer group. So wellness evaluation is a good way for us to actually give our customers the education and also give them a chance for them to understand about their lifestyle, their habits and things like that. So something that they probably, um, something that like, like, like a blind spot for them, you know, like they never thought that, oh, actually, I'm thinking this, I've been doing that and oh, I never knew that this is the way I've been eating. Okay, no wonder I'm fat or no wonder I'm not gaining weight. So that's an example. And um, so right now, can you guys think of some other reasons why we do wellness evaluations before I show you guys the next slide? That gives you even more reasons. No, you basically you basically need to understand the client condition before you give any advice. Mm, very good. Yeah, thanks, Max. That's correct. All right, so I'll give you guys a few more reasons why we do that. So I've highlighted the main things. Educating on wellness as a way of life. Let them know what exactly is a wellness. And also at the same time, we have to share our cellular nutrition as the foundation of optimal nutrition here. And then so from there, we can actually flow into customizing a nutrition program for our customers after educating them. And then we actually bring their attention to customizing the program. It's actually a lot easier. And also the last point is actually the most important part, providing ongoing support as their wellness coach results, recognition, socialization, and community. So we don't only just do one-time wellness evaluation. We actually do wellness evaluation like you know, once a week or once every two weeks, once every 10 days. Um, you know, the, the period is really dependable, right? But we've got to make sure we're always there for our clients and be there to provide them the support and keep them on track. All right. So anybody got any questions so far? No? Yep. Okay, cool. Awesome. Like I said, this is a conversation, so, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it can be very engaging. Okay, I should actually switch it to that one. All right, so here I want to show you guys the four main tools that we use here at the Fit Club to give our clients the wellness evaluations, right? Number one, the Tanita Body Composition Scale, which all of you guys are quite familiar with, and I believe all of us have um, had a good, great deal of practice, you know, using the Tanita Scan as well. Okay, and then number two is the wellness profile sheet. I'm going to show you guys an enlarged version of this wellness profile sheet a bit later. And also you can ask me for the file. 
I'll attach it to our uh, webinar profile. I mean, our web webinar folder later today after the video, so you can see an example of what the profile sheet looks like. Basically, in the sheet, um, you ask the client, you know, like, what do you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? What are your habits? Like, you know, do you drink coffee? How much water do you drink? Have you tried to lose weight before? You know, uh, if you did, you know, why didn't it work? And all these things. And also, very importantly, we ask them for their health conditions as well. So basically, it's kind of like a doctor with a patient trying to get to know everything about them. You yeah. know, getting the whole what do you call it, like a history, you know, record of everything that's happened to them before. Or like something that they ask you to fill out before you go for a facial or for a massage. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's the second one that I always carry. And the third one that I carry with me is a measuring tape. All right, I know this one that I didn't really emphasize before, but now that after doing the wellness evaluation for a while, I realize it is very important to carry a measuring tape with you. Because if you have a client who wants to go into the program with you on the spot, then it is actually very important for us to measure them, you know, right away do the circumference measuring and then write it down on the um, on the record and go, okay, so this is where you are today. Because sometimes the need to um, scan the numbers, the digital numbers can be a little bit off due to like you know different conditions, right? I'm sure some of you guys have yes. experienced that. Yes, so that's not the absolute sort of like, you know, accuracy, but it's a good sort of like reference point. Whereas if we actually carry the measuring tape and actually keep track of the circumferences, of, you know, changes, you know, and the progress, it's actually more accurate that way. You can see that all oh, their body has been shrinking or getting bigger because of muscle bulk or because of, you know, loss of fat. So um, like here, I'll just share a little bit of a picture of the areas that you should measure them. And those are the areas that's actually programmed in our app as well. The arms, the chest, the navel area, the hips, and the thighs. Same for men as well. Those are the very common areas we measure. All right, last but not least, the Wellness Network app. Okay, Chris is still listening. He must be super proud. So we actually, where you use those in Singapore as well, right? Yeah, we do. And your clients have um, the app too? Yes, and it's okay. very convenient because it gets emailed the results to our email, my email, so I can monitor mm -hmm. the results. Yeah. And then we can just key into the app right away. Mm. Yeah. So we always emphasize, uh, if, even if we're just meeting the client for the first time, but we show them that, hey, by the way, we actually have this app, you know, that's developed by our mentor, Chris, right? Thanks to Chris for this app. And then we can actually key in the result in the app right away and show them that, you know, uh, week by week, we can actually key in the result and also we can key in the pictures as well. We can put the progress pictures in there and ask the client to download this app and we set up the account for them right away. I usually encourage everyone to set up the account ASAP. Don't leave it till a bit later because if you leave it till like a few weeks later, then, you know, um, the work piles up and you have a lot of data entry to do, right? So always try to do it as soon as possible. And you know, like the clients actually kind of like it. They're like, hey, you guys have this technology, you know, this um, this app that I can actually take advantage of. And they can actually key the results um, themselves as well. So these are the four main tools that I actually carry with me. And it's actually very portable, you know, like if you guys do the wellness evaluations outside of the club, outside of home, you can just simply put them in your bag and just go anywhere. It's like a mobile nutrition club, right? Cool. Oh. Bulky. Yeah. Oh, yours is very bulky, you know, because I know yeah. um, wait, you have a very different model. We all use the same model, like the one we shown here. And Max mm. bought the same one as mine. He got the white one, right? Yeah. yeah. But is there, is, is there a difference though? I mean, it's the same, is it? It's the same. Yeah. It's uh, it's just not as bulky because it's so tiny and then it's light. So you know, like you can just always travel with it. I pack it in my suitcase. So you guys all know that we actually do the eight main readings here, actually 10 of them, you know, so you can see, you know, the body fat, water, muscle mass and all that. And I know that some of you guys are still trying to memorize the symbols because, you know, like the more you practice, the more you'll remember, okay, which symbol goes to which, uh, which one's muscle mass, which one's bone mass, you know, so it's all about practice. Okay, so we're just going to go through each one of them. And um, if you guys have any, I would like to ask you guys to contribute to that as well. If you have any of your experience and your knowledge about certain elements here, please feel free to voice up and share with us. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 
All right. So firstly, okay, I skip the whole body weight because when we do the body scan for our clients, right, the over body weight usually shows up and we do write it down. But the thing is, I, well, me personally, I don't bring their attention to overweight. I usually bring their attention to, you know, what makes up the overweight, you know, the specifics, the body fat, the water weight, you know, um, you know, the bones and everything else. Because those you know, specifics are the most um, important parts that we're looking at, right? You know, changing the body composition rather than just dropping the weight. Okay, so here we have the body fat, right? So you guys can see, you know, here the body fat, if we have different tables for different age range, and then it's pretty straightforward when we explain to our um, clients that, you know, okay, what range and what number is considered fit and good. And, you know, if you're over the certain number, it's considered quite bad. But um, just as like a reference, right? Um, generally speaking, you know, if a body fat that's more than thirty-five percent, doesn't matter if it's men or women. Usually, it's in women. Uh, men, yeah, like super obese ones will be over thirty-five. It's actually considered stroke ready. Mm, yeah, okay. it's considered very like dangerous. Like you are ready for a stroke. Yeah. So of course, I'm not saying that they will definitely get a stroke, but it just means that they have a higher chance of. You know, having a stroke or having a heart attack or some kind of like, you know, uh, physical condition, you know. So, um, you know, that's when we actually have to really kind of um, warn our clients, you know, um, and really look at their lifestyle as well. Um, I mean, generally speaking, you know, for a healthy male, you know, between the age of 20 to maybe 40, you know, like if we're looking at the body fat percentage of 8 to 17, that's actually pretty fit. I know it's a wide range. But can you guys, like Max and Wei, you guys are both athletes. Can you guys share with us what are your body fat percentages? Um, I okay. measure, <laughs> okay. measure athlete mode. My athlete mode is uh, 11.1%. Nice. Hmm. How about you, Max? Yeah, I, need to, I, need, I need to check the app. Oh. I don't remember. I think yours is really low as well. Last time I saw it was like 10 or something. Something like... Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, I, I was expecting that because you both are very active, you know, athletic male. So um, that is actually a very healthy, you know, athletic body fat percentage. Uh, 9.4. 9. Oh, 9.4? 9. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's very low. Yeah, it, it's good, you know, it's in a, in a good way, you know. But for ladies, you know, like Fiona, for us ladies... Um, generally ladies will have to keep it around, you know, 20, you know, low twenties. That is actually pretty, you know, pretty healthy. And then for, you know, for like an average sedentary lady, if it's less than 25 or no more than 25, that's still okay, still acceptable. So, um, and just like over here on the table, you know, you can see the words bad and very bad. When I explain to the clients, I don't use those words. Because, you know, sometimes like we have to be a little bit more cautious with our words as well, right? We don't want to hurt people with the words like that. Bad, bad, bad. Oh, your fat is so bad. Oh my God, that's very bad. Um, what I do is I use two words usually. I use um, excessive fat, over fat, or even over fat might be a bit sensitive for some people. I'll just say it's excessive or it's very excessive. Or the word I use a lot is unhealthy. So if it's bad or very bad, I just say it's very unhealthy. But it's true, right? So um, do you guys want to share something about the body fat? Any sort of like um, past experiences and things like that? Like if you explain body fat to your clients, what would you say? It's, it's true that people get a very negative uh, impression once they see anything that is like, even for ladies, they see anything like, 20 plus and above, right? They'll be like, oh my God, is this very bad? And, all, and naturally, a lot of them get very negative for it. So, what I, I mean, what I feel the most of the, the most of the time we, should, we are doing is more of damage control and explain to them that, you know, it's good you acknowledge that, you know, we need to work on bringing down the, the body fat level, mm -hmm. you know, and then you give, uh, the next thing is to give them a realistic goal because what they always tend to do is how much fat should I drop? And then they keep thinking about dropping it to, you know, a level a, a level where it's more of a you know, you know, you need it's not it's not an instant result. And the, mm -hmm. the mindset keep playing that you know they want they want that fat level. Okay. That is 
good healthy reviews. Yeah. Yeah, like no, like uh, maybe at ten percent, you know, when you are at uh twenty five or twenty nine percent, and yeah, you don't you, you don't get overnight results just from that. So this mm. I I feel it's our duty to explain that portion. Then. Yeah. So over here, this is just a chart as a reference, right? I'll put up a better photo next time. <laughs> this one I have, just like a visual guide to show people like, okay, so 20% looks like this, 30% looks like that, um, see 10%, 5%, 3%. Yeah, that's very dry. So, so I guess, you know, for most of the women, if they're looking for something like, like the yellow bikini girl, by the way, that, I don't think that's 10. Yeah, this one, I think that bikini girl is about probably 18. To 20 honestly so mm -hmm. yeah um, I'll find a better picture next time but you know just to just to give people like a visual indication of you know how you know how much body fat you should have as a healthy person and also aesthetically pleasant versus like oh you know a bodybuilder's body right because that's actually really really young really really lean like really really low as well so um, sometimes when I actually explain to, um, I mean, it's not from my personal experience, but it's also from my friend's experience of body fat is that when you actually drop your body fat too rapidly, it can actually influence your hormones. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, so, yeah, exactly. You know, too rapidly it can actually affect your hormones. And for ladies, you know, um, you know, I've talked to an athlete, uh, athlete lady and she told me that she stopped having a period for a while, while she was like, you know, really cutting down, you know, for competitions as well. And for men, I've talked to, you know, some athletes as well. They told me that when they were, you know, going super low on the body fat, they were very moody, you know, they will always get agitated and angry. So that's also like a side effect of um, cutting body fat too low as well. Uh, I don't know if you guys got any particular experience about that. I mean, more of like you get sick easily now. Mm. That's true. The, you know, the body can take cold, uh, cold temperature as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so I guess when we actually give advice to our clients in terms of body fat, you know, we tell them, you know, what is the healthy range. And then, of course, we tell them that, okay, in order for you to improve your body fat, you have to, you have to look at your, you know, your diet and then look at your exercise at the same time. You know, so exercise and diet really plays an important part as well. So, um, yeah, so that's it for the body fat. Uh, I have something to add about body sure, fat. Sure, sure. Yeah, please do. I, I think you also you have to be <laughs> very <laughs> be careful about, you know, I mean, in relation to the population group we are working with because, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I had, um, I was involved in certain water sports athletes. Yeah. Like uh, dragon boat paddlers and kayakers. And for kayakers, right, particularly in kayakers when you're on the water craft, right, even swimmers, water sports, right, they tend to put on body fat a little bit more easily and, you know, and dropping their body fat level too low is not going to be fair. It's, it might be detrimental to their performance because you need the buoyancy to keep the body more afloat. If not, if their body fat drops too low and muscle builds up too much, they are always fighting to keep the body instead of you know horizontally uh, advancing in, in in the swim or in the in the kayak mm. so for them maybe i'm guessing 15 to you know 15 percent to you know 20 percent is a good healthy range for male and female respectively mm -hmm. in uh, water sports if not you know if they start dropping body fat too low and they say oh no i'm getting slower in the water then that's something to, to think about i mean so then again you refer to the population group you're coaching we have to be aware of that now. Oh, right, right. Got you. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Max, do you website, have anything to add? Oh, sorry. Yeah. And the website um, the workshop is a very good fat calculator workshop. Uh, fat calculator website. Which one? Uh, the one in the picture. No, the calculate accurately. The school. Body fat calculator. Okay, we'll yeah. go check uh, it out. Okay, I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Okay, let's go check it out later. That's, this one, this one is good. Yeah. Well, bodybuilders use this website uh, to calculate their calories and so on. Oh, really? Yeah. That's really cool. All right. Okay, shall we move on? Or yeah. anyone else got anything else to say? No? Okay. Well, Max wants to take down the link. Huh? That's okay. I'll send the PDF to you guys. So, so. Oh, okay, cool. 
Okay, you can write it down. So I'm gonna. Uh, so I won't switch to the next slide. Okay, you can slide. Cool. All right. And the next one is the body water. Okay, this one's actually pretty straightforward. So the, it's the uh, amount of um, fluid in your body that's expressed in the percentage, right? So we all know that water actually plays a vital role, you know, in many aspects of our body, you know, in the body functions and process as well, especially for our body cells, our tissues, and also also our organs. Um, a, a, a very interesting fact, right? Oh, one second. Sorry, lost something here. Yeah. So, like, actually, every 2% of dehydration the human body actually experiences suffers about 20% of energy loss. So, if someone who's, like, losing 4% of um, water, right, experience, experiences 4% of dehydration, they're actually losing 40% of the energy, which is why, you know, say, during sports and also for athletes, you know, while you're active and practicing and training, it is very important to keep your body hydrated. And thankfully, we have very good products in Herbalife. Can anybody name one right away? What is a really good hydration drink? Hello. And oh, I was waiting for the the CR seven. Exactly, you got it, Max. Okay, you get a prize for me, a protein bar. Okay, you get it for me next week. <laughs> yes, CR seven. That's right. Aloe. Okay, so wait, you're right. Aloe vera is also very, very good. Sorry, I was looking for the athletic one. I was looking for the athletic <laughs> answer, yeah. So, um, yeah, so aloe vera is actually really good to recommend to everybody. Everybody can drink aloe vera in the morning and throughout the day, any time of the day. It's actually really good for uh, replenishing our body with, uh, you know, uh, yeah, extra fluids. And CR7 is also good because you have um, carbohydrate as well and electrolytes. So it aids, you know, our performances in um, sports. Okay, and then we're just going to bring our attention back to the, um, the slide here. And um, so when we look at our client's uh, body reading, the water reading, um, you know, we, we look at the reading and it just tell them that, you know, if it's a female, okay, a healthy water range should be about 50 to 55 percent. Okay, if anything that's lower than that, it's considered a little bit dehydrated. It depends on how much lower it is, right? Male is 60 to 65 percent. So far, I have seen only about three guys out of all, like hundreds of guys I've scanned only three guys have actually fulfilled that requirement so it's quite amazing to see how dehydrate how dehydrated most males are um, but you guys can share your experience with me and let us know why that's the case and most female it's also to do with our anatomy most females tend to have better better reading of our body water percentage in a way um, and just a, a really quick note, right? Um, so wait, for your uh, boot camp, do you do your body scan before the boot camp or after the boot camp? Oh, we, aim, we always aim to do it before because, yeah, after this, you know, the readings will go a little bit, a little bit off. Like, it doesn't just affect, the water is definitely affected, but uh, you get a fat percentage all affected also. Like, it might go high, mm. higher than expected because, you know, you breakdown of you know, fat molecules, right, for energy mm. when it comes to exercise goes you know, beyond two and a half minute mark. And then, yeah, you get muscle mass, might, you know, might drop, yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah, but the water is one of the main factors, I know that the readings is just very inaccurate. Yeah. Mm, that's right. And, yeah, I mean, partially because uh, our participants don't have a habit of bringing water to drink. <laughs> yeah, a lot of their water is like, you know, a small bottle and then they use most of it for their shake so that's also ah, nice. right you should get them to buy the water bottle we have in hong kong the big one have you seen the picture uh, it's 100 ml you can use it as a shaker and also as a water bottle because if they use the tiny shaker the 300 or 400 ml shaker as a water bottle it's not enough and there's no water fountain for them to fill up so mm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, we, we actually do at our um, six club here in Hong Kong. We also do encourage our community members and clients to do the body scan before the exercise, so that the reading can be a bit more accurate than after the exercise when you know when they have sweat a ton and you know usually I know the average is about two to three percent of um, overall body water loss from sweating from sports sweating. So the reading won't be as accurate. And then sometimes the loss of water also affects the reading of muscle mass as well, right? 
because of the you know the loss of water from the muscle tissues as well um so that can affect it as well um yeah so this is actually really important and um after that you know people will be like oh so how much water am i supposed to drink and we do tend to advise three liters to our clients yeah and um, i mean there is a formula of calculating how much water each individual is supposed to need, you know, according to your own like body weight and things like that. But as a general rule of thumb, you know, just thumb is about three liters. If it's a very petite lady, you know, um, you know, say maybe the size of like Simi or maybe Samantha. Samantha's here, right? I know Samantha's in, but I can't hear her. Maybe you should unmute yourself, Samantha, so you can talk to everybody. Um, so like a petite lady, then she can actually definitely go for 2.5 liter. That's okay. But if she's a very active petite lady, then definitely three or a little bit more than three liters is you know, definitely needed. All right. So let's move on to the next one. If nobody has any questions. Okay. Sorry. This one's a little bit, oh, oh my God, a lot of words, you know, I decided, oh, it's very important to share a lot with you guys, especially yeah. with the muscle mass. Because I know, like, sometimes during the um, wellness evaluations, we don't talk so much about it. You know, we just tell them that, okay, so this is how much your muscle is weighing, right? You know how we always get that number in the kilograms, right? But then we also have to educate our clients a very important or a few very important facts about muscles. By the way, we only have about one minute and a half left for this chat room. I'm going to okay. create a new link. When this is finished, I'm going to create a new link and send to a group and we can log in again. So typically you lose about a pound of muscle a year after the age of 40, which is why, you know, our metabolism actually becomes slower as we age as well, because it's directly to do with the amount of muscles we have. And um, also because of the fact that, you know, a lot of us are protein deficient, you know, we are not aware of eating enough protein and, you know, protein is the building block of uh, muscle tissues, right? So the weight of muscle in your body, including your organs, and muscle mass naturally decreases as we age. So it, it is important to preserve muscle for a variety of reasons. And muscle burns more calories than fat, which is true. And so you can eat more without gaining weight if you have a decent amount of muscle, okay? which means you know we need to eat a decent amount of protein as well. So uh, why is muscle so important? They also help to protect our bones, tendons, and ligaments. So we don't have so much bone fractures and things like that. So by saying that, it is very important to advise our clients to do resistance training, weight training, yeah, and eat protein. So I'll I'll talk about um, how much protein intake that we're supposed to have in um, in another time. But maybe one of you guys can just quickly suggest, you know, from your coaching experience. Yeah, not yeah, not athletes or what, because they exercise quite a lot in the week, you know. So they are, you know, they're utilizing the muscles quite a lot, and they're just not eating enough. They just have to follow the guidelines of, you know, mm. of you know, this is how much you should eat. You know, I I feel that we tend to underestimate the amount of protein we should eat. We you know, we tend to do that. You know, not just in the shake, you know, but in, in in our own solid meals, we tend to underestimate, and you know, a lot of people, yeah, you know, they don't really make it a habit to eat a lot of protein. They may make a habit to eat carbs, like rice, because you know, it keeps them full at an instant. They, they put it in the mouth and down the throat. You know, somehow, when it comes to taste buds, you know, it, get, it keeps them more fulfilled in their hunger compared to meat. You know? yeah, this is just something I, I notice when I speak to them about you know, mm. uh, you know, getting them to eat protein. Right, right. So let's um interview Samantha. <laughs> so Samantha did our yeah, you gotta unmute yourself now. <laughs> so Samantha did our four week challenge um last month or two months ago before the new year. And then so Samantha went through this um very sort of like vigorous sort of a nutrition plan with us where she had to take a lot of protein, right? And you have to track how much protein, carbs and fats you ate every day in order for mm -hmm. your body to experience the result, right? Do you wanna share with us a little bit about how you felt about that in terms of eating a lot of protein every day? Uh, I think that's um, pretty okay with me because um, I, I actually always love meat. <laughs> and although I, I also like carbs very much, like I like pastas and also also like sweet stuff as well. But um, mm. yeah, I, 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 I was, yeah, I, I never ate very little 
meet. So that wasn't a big problem for me. But um, I feel like, so, so when, when you prep your own meals, that's quite uh, easy to do. So like maybe a slab of um, chicken breast or fish, that, that's very good protein already. But um, mm. if you, I think it's, it's harder if you don't have time to prep meals. So this is kind of what I'm experiencing now. So um, I, I go to work and sometimes I have to go out to eat and then there's always not very enough protein. So um, yeah, I wonder if that's a problem for a lot of people, especially people who have to work all the time and don't have a lot of time to prep meals. Yeah. I, I, I be go on. So. Okay, I believe why a lot of places don't serve a lot of protein in their meals that you order, right? Is meat is more expensive. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. They fill up with carbs. <laughs> carbs are so easy. Yes, yeah, so I guess it requires a bit of preparation. Even if it's just, um, you know, say if we supplement a few things, like, like a couple of snacks, and our breakfast with our, you know, shakes, right? But we still have to sort of prepare. Like we need to know ahead that, hey, okay, um, say for someone who's trying to build lean muscle mass, right? How many shakes am I supposed to have today? And also is today like a training day? Okay, if today's a training day, then I need to, you know, pack my protein shake, for example, post-workout recovery and all that. So it is really kind of like, it does require a bit of, a, you know, beforehand preparation as well. Um, yeah. for one to get the results, right? But for, I guess, for general sort of like maintenance, then um, we, I think as coaches, we can just roughly give them a number, right? And I mean, the calculation I use is 0.9 times every kilograms of uh, body weight, right? That's the, the minimum, you know, so kind of like, say for example. For, you know, for protein? Protein intake. It's, it's too much, according to science anyway. Too much? Yeah, one point okay. nine per, per body weight. It's 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 oh, no, no. advised. Oh no, one point nine. Oh no, point nine. Oh. Ah, okay. Not yeah, one point nine gram. Oh point nine gram. So it's not one gram yet. I mean, we can round it off to one gram. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that's the kind of like the minimum, like the sort of standard that your body needs. But of course, according to the different goals and, you know, needs, right? I mean, desires. Then we can do the calculation, you know, by converting your body weight into pounds and times by how much, you know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> so there's, yeah, I mean, there are different sort of like theories out there, but I guess as long as we meet the minimum protein intake for general sort of um, health maintenance, then it should be okay. But we can also look at the specifics, right? Depending on how we want to coach our clients as well. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else got anything else to add here? Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hi. Here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I have a question. So, um, for people who would like to build more muscle, uh, maybe a lot of guys, um, they might they might uh, ask us because our, our our shakes they're like um, the same amount of protein and the, and uh, car carbs, right? But um, so what did they ask? So why don't I take um, you know like one of those protein shakes out there? instead of your nutrition shake why how is it different so where you want to answer that and then i'll add something i i mean well um, commercial brands of protein right has a lot of protein inside just mm -hmm. pure protein but people fail to understand that you no know, for protein to be to the consuming and the absorb right into the bloodstream to fit into the muscles, right? To build muscles. You need it's not just the protein, it's you know, so many things like the multivitamins and the minerals. They are the transporters of you know of your nutrients from you know once you digest the food, it goes through the digestive system. The GI tract it goes into the bloodstream and the bloodstream takes it to the muscles and the cells. Okay. And that's how you know you get your protein molecules to your, your muscle cells to for repair and building. So what a lot of um, commercial brands of proteins have is it's just pure protein inside, you know, and maybe some extra fillers like sugar to make it tasty, you know, sugary sweet, and you know, yeah, that's about it. You don't have the multivitamins inside. 
to transport the proteins for you know, to build the adaptations of growth and repair of the muscles. So you're just emptying yourself of protein and you know maybe half of it or, you know, will go to waste when you go to the toilet. <laughs> not, mm. not all of it gets absorbed efficiently. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. also another thing about commercial brands from my experience is that when I take commercial brands of protein powder, I get very heaty and a lot of flat build up. Whereas when I take um, Herbalife protein and meal replacement powders, I don't get that problem. Yeah, Sorry, you, you get very, you get very what? Heaty. Very heaty. Oh, all right, heaty. very heaty. Yeah. Body temperature goes up, yeah. And I get a lot of phlegm build up in my throat, which is oh, kind I of see. Yeah. I don't hmm. get the problem with the Herbalife shakes. I see. Did you get more bloated when you were taking other protein oh, shakes yeah, from yeah. outside? Very is bloated. I got... I used to get when I used to drink but before Herbalife when I drank other protein shakes I would fart a lot actually yeah <laughs> so it's the quality it's the quality of the protein yeah. and also uh, Samantha were you asking in particular of our F1 shakes or just like our um, you know athletic line because we have the reveal reveal shake which is a post-workout recovery drink right we shake and that has a lot more protein or are you just talking oh, okay. in general, like you know, I'll yeah, shake. I was talking in general about the you know the, the breakfast shake, F one, or, or mm-hmm. just the, yeah, or the formula like the the sport shake. Mm. So oh, so right. how, how about the how about the um the one that she talks about like the post workout one? Reveal should strength. We, yeah, oh. yeah. Should we recommend that to who? Who should we recommend that to? People who work out a lot, and also people who are trying to build muscles as well. And mm-hmm. of course, ladies as well, you know, not just men, not just people who are at the gym all the time. Right, right. Basically, anyone who's very sporty and active. And right. for ladies, we usually take, we have different formulas. Like for men, very, you know, say very active ladies, we can do the full dose, the two deep scoops uh-huh. from Reveal Strength. But for ladies, we can do one scoop plus okay. one PPP, performance protein right. powder, F3, mm-hmm. is what they call it. Actually, I feel that um, if you're going to add in the rebuild, right, it's more valuable that we don't add another PPP but add the F1 because the F1 has both protein, it's got you know, the multivitamins and minerals inside. Mm-hmm. So I Extra value that more. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. So yeah, I, I would never really recommend someone to just go purely on PPP, you know. Mm-hmm. Our, our, it doesn't yeah. taste good by itself. Yes. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I mean. uh, Because they're, they're, they're missing out on what transports the protein nutrients to the muscle cells. Cool. I like that. Yeah, I need to write that down. The other nutrients we have in the shake help transporting the protein into the, um, yes. into the body, into the cells. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. I need to write that down. Yeah. That's a really good point we can share with our clients. All right, shall we move on? Sure. Yep. Yeah, okay, we've still got 16 slides, yeah. Okay, this one, okay, this one we can quickly talk about, and it is also something that we do show our clients, because every time when we finish the, doing the scan, you can see the reading next to the uh, muscle mass, you know, it's like, ah, oh, what's that number? Most of the time, people will get like a five, right? So five is like healthy and standard. How they come about this physical rating is actually by the amount of, body fat and also the amount of muscle, the ratio of the muscle and the body fat to calculate that, okay, whether this person is a bit over fat or a little bit like, you know, large frame of bees or this person is a bit too skinny, you know, too little body fat or this person is like an athlete, thin and muscular. I think, um, Max, I think yours is like thin and muscular, right? I remember yours. I was like, wow, I haven't seen that for a while. Do you remember your physical rating? Your physical rating? I'll, I'll tell you in a sec. Yeah, I think yours is like something muscular, I remember. It was like thin the muscular or something. So if you see the athlete next to it, that means, yeah, usually in an athletic body has that sort of like, you know, amount of muscle mass. Yeah. Um, eight. So it's not super. Okay, this one, the, 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 obviously the number changes. The, the number changes as we, you know, uh, as our clients' um, body fat and the muscle ratio changes as well. Did you find it? Eight. Eight. Yeah. Thin the muscular. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I remember your reading. Yes. Because the other day, his clients were super I, impressed. <laughs> I don't remember mine. No. Well, you should. Actually, <laughs> you can actually sh- um, share yours as a reference. 
you know, to show people that it is possible, it is possible to get, you know, an athlete's body composition, you know, so something to inspire them, right? Oh my God, I want to get 9% body fat. Okay, let's not get too carried away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the next part is the BMR. We always see that four-digit number, right? Like whether it's one thousand five hundred or one thousand seven hundred or two two thousand. Everybody's um, basal metabolic rate BMR is very different depending on your body size. So if you're a smaller girl or a smaller guy, skinnier, then obviously your metabolic rate is different. It's smaller. I mean, um, smaller number. If you're very tall, 180, 190 centimeters, with like, you know, very broad structure, then obviously your body's burning more calories, right? It is the minimum level of energy your body needs. And also we can see it as the minimum amount of um, calories you need to eat in order for your body to function properly. You know, like in order for our body to function, you know, we need to take into account how, you know, nervous system, our liver, our organs, you know, all these things as well. And yeah, here it says you burn calories while you're sleeping as well. So this BMR actually takes up about 70% of the calories you burn in a day. Yeah, that's actually quite a lot. Imagine if we are like, you know, active, you know, if we're doing sports and doing all these walking around, running around, then, you know, you can imagine how much your body burns in a day, right? So um, here's like a very important note that I've got right here. Did we lose Max? Yeah. Okay, that's all right. We'll keep going. We'll pop back in. Low metabolic rates are a sign that you are not eating regularly and which is critical to maintaining a healthy metabolism. So this is something that we need to really remind our clients, you know, in order for you to lose weight, you cannot just skip meals. Some people would just like go the extreme, you know, take the extreme pro approach by, you know, skipping meals. I'll just eat less. That means there's less calorie yes. eating, right? You know, but in fact, that is, why are you laughing? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. A lot of people do that, you know, skip meals thinking that that's the way to go. Yeah, because, I think, because that's the thing, right? The formula of, Less calorie in, more calorie burnt out will cause weight loss. That kind of concept has actually impact people in a bad way, you know, yeah. because a lot of people ask me, like, is, is it true that, you know, if you want to lose weight, you just eat less calories, but you burn more calories as opposed to, like, eat more calories and burn less, you know? I mean, scientifically speaking, that is true to a certain extent, right? But then a lot of people are very fixated with the fact that, okay, that means I'm just not going to eat then. That, that means there's no calorie in. And if I'm not going to do exercise, so that means I'm just going to live with my calorie intake, right? But that's actually really, really bad. Sometimes they call it the metabolic damaging. You can damage your metabolism by doing that. And also another, another very important and very um, fatal thing is that you're losing your muscles if you're not yes. eating. Right? So, yeah. So, you're losing your muscles. Yeah. We don't want to lose our muscles. We want to lose body fat. So, uh, which is why, like, in Herbalife Nutrition Planning, you know, we set it so that we always eat protein at every meal. Yeah. So, I'll share more of that with you guys later as well. Um, yeah. So, any more questions about basal metabolic rate? Uh, I, I'm actually still not very clear on what the significance of BMR is. So you say here low metabolic rate means that, but like, so is there like an ideal range or? It's, it's hard to give it a range because everyone's body is different, but you can right. see, okay, how the number come about is actually calculated by your muscle mass. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so it's height different. Of Sorry? The height of the, and the weight of the person goes into account also. Yes. Relative to the muscle mass. Yes, the whole frame as well. So, um, so basically, I can actually look. I don't know. So, wait, do you know if there's a table or something somewhere? Because I haven't found that yet. Like a table to sort of like reference back to, and then tell people, oh, what is like a good one to um, reference from? Um, generally, it is a um, how should I say. It? it's actually a good sort of reference for us to know, okay, all right, so this is actually how much um, calories our body is burning, you know, while at rest. And um, say for someone who, okay, for example, right, if someone who's really doing the whole calorie control diet, you know, I'm controlling all the calories I'm trying to eat, you know, very low calories, I'll tell them that, you know, as little as you're eating, your number should not go lower than this number I'm giving you. Because if it goes lower than that, it's very dangerous. 
Okay, for example,、mm. if your number is fifteen hundred, for example, by the machine, right? Let's say your BMR is fifteen hundred, and I'll be like, okay, cool. So if in a day you're busy, you're not eating much, okay, but you gotta make sure that you are still at least eating fifteen hundred calories. You cannot、right. go wrong. So it's so it's a number to tell you how much you should. Eat right? How much? How much intake? But it's not. It's not a, a figure that tells you whether, like, unlike all the other stats, it's not something that tells you how how fit you are. Is that right?、Um, okay, BMR. Okay, is actually a metabolic rate of the rate of burning, rate of metabolism, rate of fat burning at rest. That means when you're or low intensity exercise. So when you're walking, you're jogging, or you are sleeping, right? How much? Okay. Energy or fat energy is the body is burning because this is the、mm-hmm. rate of burning of you know、right. that the body takes the energy from the fat.、Mm-hmm. Okay, fat takes a long time to burn, and when the body is not in urgent need of energy, it 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 takes、uh, the fat to burn. Right? How I would look at BMR and how I measure it. Okay, is actually the beauty of wellness evaluation and the and the app. Okay, the app, the wellness evaluation and the wellness experts app. It's going to allow you to track your client. So let's just say if I do a wellness evaluation, the client says I feel lethargic and energetic, lack of energy, and you check the BMR. I mean, it's going to maybe give you a rough idea. You, know, you ask them the meals, or if you notice the meals is very really little, or they're skipping meals, or eating too little for the portion, then give you a rough idea that maybe the number you're seeing on the scan, right, is not is that is an indication that this guy or this、uh, this fellow is not eating enough. You know, so what you will do is maybe give them a meal plan and.、Uh, And tell them the breakfast. They have their their shake, you know, and maybe an extra shake if they are getting hungry. You know, they're trying to skip meals, and、so、that's not the way to go. So once they are following the plan, maybe for about a week and a half or a week, you take the second reading, and if their BMR is going up and they're saying they're feeling better, and there's a good indication of telling you what's the perf- what's a good BMR for this individual because every individual、right. is different.、Hmm. Okay. If their BMR is dropping and they're they're telling you, oh, I don't have time, you know, to follow the meal plan, or I'm eating, or I'm eating lesser. Okay, anytime the BMR starts to drop lower, and you know, the question, the questions you ask them tells them the evaluation. You ask them tells them tells you that you know, oh, he's not getting a good, uh, he's not following the plan, and he's not feeling well, and that's also a sign that you know this person needs to eat more. So, so okay, this is how I so, measure it.、Mm-hmm. So、yeah. is going up usually better? <laughs> Mm, actually, if it goes up, it's good. It goes、yeah. up because more muscle mass and the person's eating well. However, they'll most of most of the time I see that they'll stagnate at a, a level,、right. a stagnate at a number, and that number if they're really you know the body is functioning well, they're not cranky, they're happy, you know, they tell you that oh I'm good, then that's most likely something that is optimal. But then again,、mm-hmm. it varies because if you're handling young younger children and they're growing taller, BMR is going to go up, you know. Just the bigger、right. bone structure, taller height, more muscle they can put on. Okay.、Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Wei. That's a lot of good information. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then next to the BMR, we have the metabolic age, also the body age, and that's also dependent on the、um, the the rate, metabolic rate, and also our muscles as well. So if the age indicator is higher than the user's actual age. Then the user needs to improve the basal metabolic rate again.、Yeah. And how do we improve that? Increasing the exercise levels、um, that will help you build a healthier muscle tissue. Oh, sorry. And it will actually help you burn more calories, and more muscles will improve your metabolic rate. You know, as a result.、Um, oh, associated with the tummy pillows. Okay, yeah. So the feature calculates this feature on the scan calculates your BMR and indicates the average age associated with that type of metabolism. So sometimes you know some of our clients have very like age number which is like a lot older than their actual、um, you know age. Then that means okay your metabolism is really low and you know, need to look at. Boop, I need to say Charlotte. Okay, what? Is that you, Max? <laughs> I think he's talking to <laughs> his wife. So that's that's a sign that we need to um you know improve the、uh, metabolism and also the、uh, hey you look very happy what happened yeah I'm just happy yeah do you have anything to add to contribute about the metabolism and also the metabolic age we we're just、yeah. talking about the BMR just now 
actually I have a question about the other uh, getting wait a second. Oh yeah, he's working on the Tanita machine now. I can hear it. <laughs> also he does not some, something sounds like a calculator there. What are you doing right now? Are you setting something? No, when you when, when you're getting the BMR, then you're mm -hmm. getting two numbers. Oh, the other ones are different unit. The kilojoules. Oh. Yeah, the, kilo the other ones the yeah. kilojoules. Yeah. Different unit of measurement. Yeah, so it's the same, just same different unit. Right? Yeah. So yeah, because the other one seems a lot bigger, right? Yeah. So we usually go by the the big calories. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is the bone mass. Yeah, the bone mass we usually, it, it is also very important, you know, we usually check, okay, you know, with your, against the body weight, you know, okay, so say if your weight as a woman is, let's say she's 55 and her bone mass is about 2.3, okay, so which means she is medium boned, okay, so she's actually pretty healthy as well. And the reason why we check it is due to a few reasons. You know, we want to see if you know, the person's bone has enough calcium, you know, enough mineral as well. And if that number, if the bone mass actually decreases slowly over time, that means the person is losing bone density. And that's, that's not ideal. That's not really healthy as well. So maybe we need to advise the person to see a doctor. You know? But generally speaking, you know, for people still 40 age or uh, 60 or, you know, mid 50s, that shouldn't happen. You know, as we age, our body, our bones actually do deteriorate and lose bone density naturally as well. And also another very important note that I also tell people why we, do the bone mass um, so say if someone who's very um, overweight you know say if a lady she's 90 kilos but her bone mass is actually 2.4 so you can see that she clearly does not belong to the big bone you know uh, category but her weight is so much heavier than her bones so in a way that will add a lot of pressure to her joints right so as a result you know usually a very overweight person tends to struggle with walking and tend to have a lot of knee pains and hip pains, uh, lower back pains and ankle pains and things like that. So yeah, so it just adds a lot of stress, a lot of load and stress to the joints as well. Yeah. Um, any of you guys got anything to add here? I, I, I personally, I noticed that uh, bone mass among a lot of um, a lot of the wellness coaches and you know is don't really rate its importance which i am quite surprised because bone mass is an indication of two things you know mm -hmm. for two population groups one is for women because when you have your menstrual cycle the bone mass will definitely be affected it most probably will go down because of the hormone relaxant the female hormones that is uh that's going to do a lot with the, the calcium calcium uh, ions, calcium molecules, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's got to do a lot of fat level. So bone is one of the things that, you know, make it more brittle for women, especially during the menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. And there's something to think about when, you know, for cal Calplus, the supplement, or mm -hmm. calcium, the calcium magnesium. X-Cal, right? We call it X-Cal in Hong Yeah, Kong. right. The calcium. So yeah, not, okay. No. Yeah, another thing when you buy a uh, calcium supplement which is why I always I mean Herbalife is wonderful is that you know it's got a good balance of magnesium and calcium because without magnesium calcium cannot be fully cannot be absorbed into the bones it's one of the prerequisites for calcium absorption so if you're buying a calcium supplement with no magnesium you're just dosing your liver with a lot of kidneys uh, a lot of stones you know your kidneys sorry with a lot of calcium stones and lastly, the other population group I, 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 um, I like to point out is kids. So if their bone mass is dropping, at, uh, they're doing the teens, right? Then there's something to be, to be concerned about. Kids and, you know, uh, pre-teens. You know, oh, we start another bone. one in 10 minutes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because the bone mass is always, you know, develop. it should be developing. So if they're dropping on bone mass, bone mass mm -hmm. is an indication of, like, I mean, their calcium and magnesium diet is lacking in their diet. Right. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it is actually important. I, I do I do check it. And then I guess the more you do the body scan, right? The more mm -hmm. you actually remember the number. You know, generally the ladies 
you know, between 50 to 75 kilos, and they get about two point something kg. That's actually quite healthy. Yeah. So, but it is important. Yeah. So, okay. Next one. Ah, this is the most important one. We always leave it to the last, right? You know, on our little evaluation <laughs> sheet, the visceral fat, also the internal organ fat, is always the last item. You know, it doesn't mean it's the least important one. It's the least, the, the last, but but you know, the most important one here. So I know all of you guys have experienced a lot of um, you know, visceral fat readings. You know, for different people, so you look very tired. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, we'll quickly wrap it up. You know, we'll go through all that. Is everybody okay? Staying for another like ten minutes or something? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So we all know that the visceral fat is the fat that surrounds the um, internal organs, right, in the trunk. So someone who can actually look very skinny, especially here in Asia, but she or he could have very high internal organ fat. It is actually due to her or his lifestyle, you know, eating habits, you know, drinking habits, and also basically, you know, your, um, the amount of like, you know, food that you eat, eat outside as well. Um, so directly when we see the number, if we see the number, you know, right away, we can kind of like have a picture of what the person's lifestyle is like. You know, if I see a man whose number is like 15, 12, then I can kind of guess, okay, you kind of eat out, right? And he's more than half of um, the week. And then you probably drink a little bit, um, a bit of alcohol as well, right? So most of the time I'm like, bingo. They're like, oh, how did you know? I'm like, yeah, I'll look at your body fat. No, you know, but of course I don't put on that face. I just explained to him that, you know, it is the body fat that's directly related to the way you eat. And you know, if someone who's got a very alarming body fat, say 13 to 59, yeah, that is actually a very wide range. Anything above 13 is actually very alarming. Then, you know, they have a higher tendency of developing high blood pressure, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. Do you guys know that type 2 diabetes is actually the number one? Number one, number two, I can't remember. One of the two top ones, you know, of, um, you know, raising sort of a world at a, a, epidemic right now you know like almost i don't really know about the rate in southeast asia but i know that um the other day like you know max mm. i hope you don't mind me sharing you know when i met some of your clients the other day remember yeah sure two sure. of them were actually diabetics there were four of them right four indian clients and two of them actually diabetics imagine that's like 50 percent you know i mean it just happened to be that group i was actually very shocked you know how high is the diabetes rate and it is actually really directly to do with the way you eat you know the the food that they cook for themselves as well and i usually show them this picture you know explain to them what exactly is the visceral fat you know through the pictures you know you can, they can actually see visually oh my god you know it is really the fat that's surrounding the internal organs it is not a fat that you can pinch that's subcutaneous fat this is the kind of fat that would drop the clients will see the fat drop once they start to clean up the diet. Once they really start to, you know, fix the nutrition and start to eat clean and healthy, that visceral fat would definitely drop. And it usually drops very slowly and incrementally by 0.5. So on the right hand side, you can see an MRI scan of, you know, the, um, the fat, you know, that's beneath the skin versus the fat that's deep inside the body. I know it's not super clear, Jane, but you, do, do you have this slide separately? Or Sorry? Or do you have this slide separately or? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. You want that just by itself, right? Yeah. Sure. No sure, sure. Yeah, I separate. can send you. I should. I can send you guys the the pictures individually as well. Yeah. So, um, and you will get a copy of this uh, presentation after the um, video tonight as well. Mm -hmm. And this is also something that I always explain after showing them the pictures, just to let them see that, you know, in the blood vessels, a healthy blood vessel has not much um, visceral fat. I mean, it doesn't have any visceral fat built up. So the blood flows smoothly, you know, into the heart, into the brain, perfect blood supply. Once, if you look at the picture uh, on the right hand side, number three, you know, once the blood vessels clogged up, you know, with all the visceral fat, you know, the, the, the blood flow cannot get through, right? Can you imagine what's going to happen to our brain and our heart when the blood supply doesn't come through? Yeah, so it is, sorry, a bit disgusting. Yeah, the two pictures down there. But sometimes the strong visuals can really... So math is like, ah, I don't want to look at it. <laughs> so, okay, I'll quickly skip this picture now. Yeah, so after <laughs> explaining all that, uh, I'm showing you guys a very enlarged version of the um, evaluation or questionnaire that I always keep in hand. I have this booklet here. 
So basically, this is just like an extract of the uh, wellness evaluation. You know, you guys can actually feel free to get a copy from me. I have a few different versions. They're all pretty much similar to that. And I have this little booklet, you know, we can also, I mean, feel free if you want to make up your own as well. If you feel like, oh, certain questions are missing here. I want to input something else as well. I just found it very handy to have a little booklet with me. I can carry this with me anytime. And also um, it's double-sided. <laughs> so you can actually take a look at some of the questions I asked them here. You know, here asking them about what they eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all the questions here are in here as well. And also at the back of each page, this is for each individual. I have the um, body reading and also the circumferences measurements at the back as well. So I manually, sometimes I don't really have time, you know, immediately to key things into the app or if it's a new client, I just write it down, write down the date and I write it down here. So sometimes I write it down manually. Sometimes I actually do, I, I do both, you know. So I have a hard copy here kept with me as well. And there's a little section I have here that actually, where I sometimes ask them for like their referrals numbers. Like, hey, if you really enjoy those, doing this wellness evaluation with me, um, you know, do you mind to recommend a few friends or maybe your colleagues or, you know, uh, family members who will be interested to um, do this as well. So you can actually recommend them to me. Uh, I don't do this as often because uh, most of the time, some of these people will probably want to, um, you know, try the program already, right? And then you can actually ask for referrals easier after they get a good result from the program. So I'll send you guys a few different versions of this um, lifestyle analysis after the video. I also have a Google Form, Google Form version of um, wellness evaluation that I send out to online prospects. So if you ever come across any leads or any prospects on Facebook or on Instagram, after having a bit of a chat with them, you can actually send a Google form to them and say, hey, you know, if you don't mind taking five minutes out of your time and just do this quick wellness evaluation for me, then I can actually get a better understanding of your lifestyle. And then maybe I can actually make some suggestions, some recommendations for you. And um, I can suggest my programs too if you're open to it. So that's the one. And I usually actually do this while I'm doing the analysis. After explaining everything to them, I get a really good detailed um, profile of what their lifestyle is like. And then after seeing all the readings, obviously the clients will have a lot of questions, right? Oh my God, how can I improve my body fat? Oh my God, how can I improve my visual fat? You know, this and that. And then this is our job to explain to them about the breakfast. You know, I'm showing you this. This slide from last week, you remember the blood sugar, right? You know, so I'm going to quickly skip through this part because then we can actually bring their attention into the breakfast. Like, okay, so you want to improve the, what do you eat for breakfast? Okay. This is what you eat. Okay. Oh, no wonder. You know, da, 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 and introduce about that breakfast concept to the prospect. This are the part you guys saw from last week. And then very importantly, before we recommend any products to them, I know a lot of times we're very eager to recommend products to them. After explaining all the signs to them and, you know, they seem to be very interested, I always, always do this with them before. Set a goal with them, you know. Okay, what is your goal? Maybe a couple of them. You know, oh, I want to look good in my wedding dress. Okay, what is your... Okay, we have less than one minute. I'm going to quickly create another link just to finish up the last part of this. Okay, we can get cut off any time now. Always set a goal with them. You know, what is your goal? Okay, I want to lose 10 pounds, all right? And also set a really realistic time frame with them as well. Okay, 10 pounds, okay. Do you have a particular event that you want to go to? Okay, realistically speaking, we can do two to three months, for example, right? And also we need their commitments as well. Okay, what can you commit to? You know, are you able to commit to, you know, want to say three months with me? Or are you able to commit like a month and try it out? You know, and also when we do the goal setting, right? This is my style. I usually get to set two goals with them. There's the outcome goal, which is what do you want to achieve, right? Like 10 kg, 15 pounds, whatever, gain, how many pounds? Okay, everyone's back. Everyone's back in. Fiona and uh, Samantha. And, okay, they're probably coming in as we're talking. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, so we just carry on from here since three of us are here already. Yeah, thanks for staying with me tonight. <laughs> this is going a little bit over time. So um, so we're going to wrap it up quickly. But I hope everyone's having a, enjoying this whole meeting.
having a good time. Yeah, thumbs, possible. thumbs up if you do. <laughs> oh, Max, no, he's not enjoying a good time with us. What? You didn't hear my question. Yeah. <laughs> no, we wanted some thumbs up. I heard your question. <laughs> Something, thumbs Remember, up. Okay, he wasn't listening. Good. I said thumbs up if you're having a good time. <laughs> I know, I, I heard it. I just, my thumbs are busy with two computers. Oh, two? <laughs> wow, you're on two computers? What are you working on? Remember, I'm multitasking. Yeah, I know. This guy's always multitasking. It's amazing. <laughs> if I multitask, I lose my focus. Yeah, I would lose my focus. I find it hard to multitask. Yeah, it's not for every human being. It's only for superhumans like Max. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's superhuman. <laughs> yeah, with nine with nine nine percent body fat. With nine percent body fat, yeah, that's pretty superhuman too. Yeah, I think the girls are still logging in or I mean we can keep on going and then uh... Oh Sam, okay. Um so where were we? Okay. Um, um, maybe a goal. Yeah. So a lot of times when we set goals, right, we tend to focus on the outcome goal more. I mean, it is really good to have an outcome goal. Um, that's the the dream, right? We not a dream, but right? you know, it's like destination we want to we want to walk towards with our client. But also the journey along the way is actually determined by the behaviors, right? So it is, it is very important for us to set, okay, Fiona's back. So it is very important for us to set behavior goals with our clients as well. Behavior goals are also translate to the commitment, you know, like, okay, what can you commit to? You know, okay, so if you want to lose weight, if you want to go on the program with me, okay, at least you need to, you know, give yourself the, um, the commitment to do breakfast every day, at least, right? That's consistency, you know, consistently drink water, for example. You know, that's also one of the behavior goals. You know, make sure that every day you meet three liters, every day you eat, you know, five servings of you know, vegetables and fruits. You know, every day you eat, you know, um, accurate, uh, adequate amount of protein, for example. Those are all behavioral goals. Um, also, yeah, doing exercise, you know, at least 30 minutes of um, exercise per day. So those are the behavioral goals that's going to actually determine how that person is going to achieve the goal. If you only have the outcome goal with the young client, without the behavior goals, the outcome goal could be very far away, right? It could still be just a dream with no actions. So, um, so this is what we do with them. You know, once we set it down, once we set down the goals with them, this is when the clients actually start to feel a lot more confident about, you know, go into the program with you. And then we can actually make recommendations according to the goals. You know, if it's like weight gain, weight loss, athletic performance enhancement, or detox, black tummy, whatever it is, right? These are just some of the examples of um, packages, you know, we put together for everyone. You know, some people might just need a simple breakfast, you know, aloe tea and shake, but some people might need enhancement like a protein boost or fiber. You know, some people might need some of the extra tablets for the enhancement, you know, and some people might need the athletic shapes as enhancement as well. So this is when we go on to personalize the progress for them. Okay. And that's not our topic today, but I'm just sharing, sharing you um, some pictures to show you guys what it is. And also we give them meal, meal guides as well, you know. So this is a um, um, example from the Herbalife corporate material where this is like a, it's a rough guide, you know. Okay, if you're incorporating the Herbalife Formula One and some of the protein products into your daily nutrition, you know, this is the rough guide you can follow for weight loss, you know, why shaking the breakfast and replace one meal with another shake and then eat one wholesome meal and have some protein filled snacks in between. Everyday nutrition, just replace your breakfast with a shake and have whole, two wholesome meals. And for weight gain, you know, it's pretty much two to three shakes a day, you know. The best, for the best um, result for weight gain, I mean muscle gain, it's actually good to have one shake with every meal. You can drink the shake as a, as a dessert. That's how our guy from um, Malaysia, T Ben, got his um, oh, gained yeah. weight. He gained 20 kg. Oh my God. That is amazing. Yeah, he was such a skinny bastard before, right? Now he's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. 
Now that's what's that? Joke, skinny what's bar. that thing next to the breakfast shake? Which snack protein bar? Uh, the weight gain. Bre- gain breakfast. Oh, uh, it's a yogurt. Plus. I think it's a yogurt. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because for weight gain, they need to eat something else on top of the shake. Only drinking ah. the shake is not going to be enough for them to, you know, mm. gain weight. Yeah. So the shake is like a good addition, nutrition addition, on top of I... your actual food as well. And then you can see there's a little can snack. It's actually a, mm. a protein beverage mix, which we don't have here in uh, Hong Kong. It's only oh. available in America. It's actually quite nice. I've tried it before. It's a peach flavor. <laughs> and then there's a sachet for everyday nutrition. It's a soup. It's a protein soup. Yeah. I so this is just... The, uh, sorry. Yeah, what are you going to say? I suggest you replace the snack with two protein bars for weight gain. Yeah, two the, 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 second snack, the second snack. Because we, um, we don't have the product, right? So maybe two protein bars would be good. Right. Gain more. I think for us. So how, you, you mean like for one snack, it's two protein bars? Uh, okay, you see the weight gain, the second snack, right? There's yeah. a, there is a one product, yep. protein drink that you, you, we don't have in Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm suggesting uh, so, for that, yeah, two protein bars. Because I believe the protein content for that is a little bit higher than just one protein, one protein bar. Yeah. It is a bit hard. So substitute substitute that drink we don't have with two protein bars. Yes. I see. For weight gain, for weight gain. I have it here. All right. Oh, you have it? Yeah, I bought it in Canada. It's, uh, I'll bring one for you guys to try. I should actually ask some Vince to bring one. It's actually nice. It's like a peach flavor. Let me see what's the content for God. What's, one serve, how much is it? Uh, 15 grams actually. Wow, it's a lot. Yeah, it's high, yeah. So it's a protein like drink. It's not like a um, milky drink. It's actually like a refreshing, fruity, like peachy flavor, fruity sort of like drink. Huh. So yeah, it's very interesting. I still have one dose. Yeah. Okay, whoever's oh, lucky will that. try the last dose. Yes, it's oh, actually quite nice. Yeah, like you can just, you don't even have to blend it. You can just kind of mix it with water. It's like a peachy drink. Fruity, peachy drink. Uh, it's a bit like whey protein. Though. It's whey, yeah, it's whey protein. Interesting. Like a whey coach, whey here, whey protein. <laughs> <laughs> That's his nickname. Whey's nickname is whey protein. He came oh out my gosh. <laughs> yeah, clink <Jane>. Jane. <laughs> Okay, right. So, all right. So, that was all for our um, wellness evaluation um, topic tonight. But before we end the... Um, Actually, I want to hear from all of you guys before we end. But before we do the sharing, the team sharing, I want to share with you guys the upcoming events, which is quite important as well, because I know I haven't really informed a lot of you guys before. So, um, so training and business boosting events. The next big one is called the Extravaganza. So in Herbalife, every year we have one massive, you know, everybody together event in summer, which is called Extravaganza. And it is like a big party. It is also a big training sort of like event where um, the one in Singapore this time is basically putting everybody in Southeast Asia together, including Australia and New Zealand, right? So our team usually goes to the um, Southeast Asia one. Um, last year was in Bangkok and then this year is going to be Singapore. So lucky you, Zue, you don't have to fly. <laughs> the rest of us will have to fly. So it's going to take place on May the 11th to the 13th. So it's kind of like a two and a half day training. So in a training, you guys will actually be exposed to a lot of top leaders and um, very successful sort of like herbal lifers, people from different nutrition clubs and different fit clubs from different countries, all there sharing their success stories and also um, giving us the tips on, you know, like how to um, boost your business and how they actually build a successful business through say either wellness lifestyle or active lifestyle you know different types of methods different types of dmos different operations but everybody can actually you know learn something from the event um so wait how many extravaganza have you been to one or two one so far one so far right can you share a little bit of your extravaganza experience with everyone else the, the business development um, material that you'll get from the Shrimpians is going to be a lot more a lot more in-depth intense. Yes, it's quite a lot to take in, but at least it's from really successful people. 
and when they're sharing with you firsthand about their experiences, you know, with the before, after, and you know, they, they tell you a story. It, it, it they really tell you the story of their experience, and it feels a very real and realistic to you to the extent that you really start to understand how achievable you know your your goal of developing a business is. Yeah, it definitely is, and yeah, no, um. It help you run. It will definitely help if you are you, like my main DMO is um Fit Club, and also online social media evaluations with clients. So definitely gives you a really good guidance of how you know you're gonna get more, you know, reach out more customers and you know, uh, how do they need you know, you also realize that how or the how the high level business owners you know build us build the business is many results. Mm. It's all about you know, adhering to the customer's needs, you know, being present and listening closely to what they say because that will define what their needs and what their goals and their wants are. Mm. And that will help you to fulfill them. Mm. You know, cool. You'll pick up a lot uh, from business development and you know, coaching. Personal development too. A lot of yes. it is actually personal development in the um, yeah. organization. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, I can actually share some of the videos from the past extravaganzas I have been to. And just to let you guys see what the atmosphere is like, what the learning environment is like. Um, it's actually pretty exhilarating because you are really meeting so many different people you know in the business from so many different countries as well and everybody's drinking the same shake by the way where yeah. is it this year in singapore, singapore. Yeah. yeah it's singapore this year so it's always there no um bangkok and singapore take turns to host this event okay last year was in bangkok and this year is in singapore and and a very important detail about this event is that Extravaganza is only open to supervisor level distributors, which means people who have achieved 50% of membership status. So, okay, so here, okay. So maybe we can hear some from Fiona. So Fiona has already committed her ticket. She actually bought her ticket to Extravaganza, which, which is really amazing, right? Which means Fiona is giving her commitment to becoming a supervisor by May. That's really, really amazing. We're working on it now, you know. We're all here for each other, you know. Um, Fiona, can you share with us why you wanna go to Extravaganza? Being someone very new in the industry, what made you wanna go to Extravaganza? Due to the Malaysia one, was that called? Spectacular. spectacular. Yeah, spectacular. And I thought it's amazing. And a lot of people sharing their, uh, their business, how they've been through it, I want to, learn more because like this one is more intense so um and i want i want to be free i want to build my business as well so i want to make it happen and jean is going to canada so i better do it before she goes right <laughs> <laughs> oh you are very driven all right cool we're here to um support you we're all here for you yep just remember we're here for everybody's goals we're here to support each other so that's really awesome. I'll give you guys more details about how to qualify for a supervisor. There's a fast track to qualify for a supervisor, meaning how to get to 50% member discount status faster than one year. The general qualification is about three to 12 months, but there's a faster way to achieve that. So I know some of you guys are still quite unsure about it, but I'll actually share with you in private about how to get there. Because I know Max is also very interested, right? So, um, yeah, so can you imagine by May, we're all supervisors and going together as a team. It's going to be amazing. A team trip. Woohoo! All right. So this is just something exciting to share. And the next one is another event. It's in KL. I also want to mention it just very quickly. It's a member development weekend. So it's a whole weekend, two days. It's also like a lot of training for the business. And also, uh, I'm not sure, I've never attended something like this before, but it sounds pretty cool. Sounds uh, like it's something experience. Like, have you been, to way? have you been to? I believe I've been to one called, I think it's LDW. It's just, they changed the L to leaders to member. Oh, so I leader development about, weekend. No, it's it used different. to be this development weekend. Right, right. So it's also mm -hmm. learning, right? Two days of like intensive learning. Yes. Um, 
it's a lot of um if I recall from that experience this this is um it's a lot of experience in sharing. Mm-hmm. However it's not something that is of um of a, it's more pers- it's more personal I feel. It's not on a large scale like spectacular and and uh, extravagant. However, it's a little bit more personal. So I feel that the bird presenter tends to be, be a bit more comfortable with a smaller group, smaller crowd, and they tend to be they tend to share a little bit more personal experiences, which actually will help you can relate to it very well, and you will you will aid you in you know applying what you learn into practice. Cool. So yeah, so if you guys want a trip to KL, this is open to all members. So we can all go as well. It's happening in April 14th and 15th. Okay, and... Uh, okay, I'm still joining for this one for sure. You want to join this one for sure? Or you no, can't? I can't. You can't, okay. You're traveling that day, right? No, KL is closed for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> KL is what? I can't get to KL. It's because of your uh, passport, right? Yeah. Oh. Oh. All right. So this is a um, something that I want to share with all of you guys. I like to end the presentation with always like some cool philosophy. Uh, you guys can screen cap this or um, just grab it from the slides after the video. You know. So what it takes to be successful. Um, what it means to be a good wellness coach. You know. We need to have a burning desire to change our own life. And we need to have the willingness to learn something new all the time, always learning, and also a willingness to work. Yeah. So really be committed to our work. Um, doesn't always mean hard work, it means smart work and hard work at the same time. So um, just, just a little reminder for everybody, uh, which I found these three things really, really useful and golden that I remind myself with, right? And just before our next week, I want to ask you guys, um, you don't have to tell me now, but I would like to hear maybe just like a quick something from each of you guys. Um, it's, we're already in February, right? So today's the 1st of February. Um, have you guys thought of um, what kind of new action do you want to take for you to achieve a good result this month? Whether if it's like a personal health goal or if it's a Herbalife business goal, you know, if you can think of a new action that you can take that you want to take to achieve a new result feel free to share with us here now um, but if you need some more time then yeah you can share with us in private in the chat group as well i'm restarting going to the gym because i missed a lot of sessions you want to start going to the gym right max yeah i need to restart cool awesome go for you we're here for you uh anyone else um <laughs> oh, sorry. I want to be more serious about myself and then my business because uh, I was quite down um, yesterday and before the day. So I was like not really serious to doing exercise and for eating. So I have to get back, get back on track. And of course I need to talk about like to people more about the business and then make friends. A guy I just talked to today, he said I was quite pushy and then like quite hassle. I have to change my attitude as well. Yeah. Oh, he said that, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can, you can share with us how you talk to the guy and what did you say to uh-huh. me, you know? You can share with us later, you know, like share, okay. share a conversation with me if you like and then we can help yeah, you. Sure find a way so basically Fiona you the new action you want to take is to change your attitude and change the way you talk right yeah okay this cool important. I can't talk you know I can't really speak to two people oh you can I think it's just about you learning new ways you know adopting my new ways to talk to people and that will actually benefit you you know in your life and also for your business so don't yes. look at it as a bad thing yeah awesome I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect also. <laughs> All right. All right, next person. I've um I've started giving out flyers. Um like already done it twice in this week. Once is on uh Tuesday and the other was today. And yeah, I'm I'm so happy I managed to get the flyers distributed today because my schedule was a little bit um off this morning and I it almost disrupted my time however i managed to get it done and 
yeah, I'm happy, you know, I gave up flyers for my coaching services today, you know, which was, which was just um, something that I, I almost thought I couldn't do it, you know. There was, uh, I had 45 minutes and I got it all done within 45 minutes. Nice. Good on you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going on the social media and doing a flyer, so all channels all out, you know. I'm being more aggressive, you know, sending out the message and offering my services out. Massive action. That's amazing. Good for you. I'm so happy for you. Um, Samantha? All right. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I guess I'm the newest member in the group. So just starting. Uh, I set up my social media platforms. I, yeah, I'm yeah. on Facebook. Work it, Sam. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. So I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. And I'm uh, starting to put up content and um, sharing it with some friends. And uh, I think I, I've been getting um, more people to like them today. Cool. So that's slowly ramping up. So that, that that would be one platform that I could utilize to like share events and so basically I, I'm right now I am just you know trying to share my own journey first to get people uh to get people's attention that oh oh Sam's with this really like new healthy fit lifestyle and all oh, what's going on and actually some people have been asking me some people have. Um, send messages to me saying that wow you achieved su such good results uh, what did you do and so I've been telling them a little bit about the fit club like the challenges and stuff so mm. um, yeah mm. so there could be some leads there so really? uh, I'll be working from that and yeah so um, personally uh, I'm yeah so working out going to the gym but um, I, I really need to uh, I, I really want to uh, build more muscle so I, I feel a bit like a, a bit too thin actually so uh, personally I, I like to really bulk up a little bit so um, maybe I need to approach it from I don't know the, the, the diet so maybe I could add some more other products like the PPP yeah sure. performance protein powder and you can yeah. try to rebuild after workout as well yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, maybe a drink, drink, uh, more one more shake a day to mm. do that. That's yeah. good. I'll I'll send you guys a chart um, after the video, which is more detailed about how to personalize your nutrition with our products as well. So you can take a look at the weight gain part, and um, yeah, and then you can document your progress as well, right? You know, to show that okay, I got very lean, but then I want to build up a little bit more muscle. Then you know, and you can see progressively with your body, the changes your body goes through. Yeah, cool. Thanks for sharing, Sam, and welcome aboard. You know, thank you. Um, I'll just quickly tell you guys mine. Okay, so the new action I have decided to take is to actually include my miracle morning routine again. I've actually stopped practicing my miracle morning routine. For those of you guys who has never heard of miracle miracle morning routine, basically it um, consists of um, some reading time, some meditation time, um, exercise, of course. And, oh, I think it was finished recording. Exercise time, you know, visualization time. And what else? Uh, it's, it's The acronym is SAVER. So uh, what else have I missed? Yeah, I've gotten everything right. Silence, you know, affirmation. Yes, one more is affirmation. So I give myself a bit of affirmation. So I haven't been practicing that for a while, a few months actually, and I felt like you know I kind of lost the grip of starting my day, and my days could usually go a little bit wonky, like you know I run out of time for this, I don't have enough time for that, mm -hmm. and then today I decided to take new actions, meaning that okay, I need to practice my miracle morning again. As soon as I got up, I'm like, you know, screw the cold, it's so cold, but I'm not gonna be a victim of this this cold, I'm gonna fight it. So I got out, I practiced my miracle morning, and that really set a good tone. It's like eating good breakfast, right? Set a good tone for the um, nutrition for the rest of the day. And I was like so focused for the rest of the day because I knew that Jane, you know, you're doing something new, set a good tone for the rest of the day, and you can be more productive. And as a result, I complete all my to-do tasks for today. For the first time in like, Oh, years, you know, <laughs> so I felt so good, 
you know, and that really goes to show that when we want a different result, we have to take different action. Yeah. So yeah, that's all. That's my sharing. Um, so I think we should probably end the meeting now. Sorry to take so much of everybody's time tonight. It's almost midnight. Yeah. Thank you for staying up so late. Um, anyone else got anything else to share to say before we go? No, no, Max, no, you're upside down. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm all not right. upside down. You all are upside down. I'm okay. <laughs> we're all in the same direction you know? so awesome perspective um, yeah so i think i'm just a quick i mean while we're here i think on friday so friday evening i'm at the club with fiona right we're doing boot camp i mean social media boot camp right fiona tomorrow night okay and then saturday saturday sam you want to meet for like um doing social media and goal setting right yep yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Fiona, if you're free Saturday lunchtime, um, feel free to join us. Like we can do one together, the three girls, three of us together. We can do some, um, you know, um, goal setting together as well and then some work together. Yeah. And then Max, you, um, you, you are still confirming with your friend about Saturday, right? Uh, yeah, probably it will not happen on Saturday. I'll ask her tomorrow again. But if not, then she will come next week. Okay, sure. Okay, let me know. Great. Today. Sorry, I used the last. Sorry, were you going to say something? What time? What time? When? Saturday. Uh, up to you girls. Yeah. Around 1 p.m. For lunch. Lunch and meet. Okay. Yep. We can yep. do it at the club. Yep. Yep. Sure. Cool. cool Pack cool. the lunch. Yep. Awesome. All right, then. I'm going to set a task list for you girls before we meet up so we can be productive. <gasps> Homework. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sam, you still have 15 names, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. And Fiona, you got your list already. I remember you underlined those names. Yeah. And you said they need to lose weight. Yeah. So trust me, when you start to write names, you're like, oh my God, I know so many people. They all need our help. Uh -huh. yeah. Once you start to do it, you'll know what I mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, everybody, thanks so much for a long night tonight. It's really happy meeting. Uh, have a good night. I'll speak to you guys soon. Thank good you. night. Bye. 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 Bye.